Welcome to Studio D on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. This is Sooner Sports Pad. Now, here's your host, Allison Gappa. Welcome to Sooner Sports Pad. I'm Allison Gappa alongside Matt McCulloch, Mesa Prince, and our energetic live studio audience. Guys, who's in there? We got the bruisers of the OU hockey uh, team the in there. Uh. Yeah, little ST and a few more black eyes in the audience than normal. We'll look for that. We've also got linebacker Eric Stryker in studio. We'll talk with him later on. And also, we'll give you an all-access look at the life of an OU football walk-on. And coming up a little later in face-off with the basketball season right around the corner, Matt and I debate which women's basketball player will have the biggest impact. But first up, the Sooners are coming off a crushing 31-30 to loss to Kansas State. The numbers favored the Sooners. OU outgained the Wildcats 533-385. to They were 7 of 11 on third downs, but it came to kicking game. There is a handful of mistakes. Matt, what happened? Yeah, that's right. Michael Honeycutt, who has been nothing but Mr. Reliable for the Sooners. Money cut. Well, but Saturday was couldn't be more ironic for the all-time points leader. Honeycutt connected on his first attempt of the day, tying a Big 12 record for most field goals made. But the day took a turn south right after that. Honeycutt missed a 32-yarder as the first half came to a close. Then, with Oklahoma down by one in the fourth right there, look, what looked like a simple chip shot, Honeycutt just shanked it wide left, Mason. You know, in his career, Honeycutt has made 70 of his 81 attempts. It was so uncharacteristic of him, but sometimes, you know, Mason, that's just the way football goes. It is sometimes. Mason, thoughts on why OU couldn't lock it down? Oh, I like what you did there. Tyler, lock it. Tyler, lock it. I see what you said. <laughs> a <laughs> lot of people will cite the kicking game as the problem, but to me, it's the play calling on the offensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, starting off in the second quarter, OU quarterback Trevor Knight threw that pick six on the one-yard oh, line, right as you what? see right there. I don't really know why that play was called. You're back against your goalpost. And then, right before that Honeycutt missed the field goal, Three running plays in a row up the middle that you get stopped every time. You don't have Aaron well, Rutkowski. Do you yeah. don't have Blake Bell in the game. Two of your big hog mallies up front that push the line forward to get Samaj P. Ryan in there. It's it's pretty rough uh, play calling in my opinion. Yeah. Matt, who is our offensive MVP this week? Well, once again, the game ball goes to Sterling Shepard. This guy's an absolute gamer, yeah. right? Am I yeah. right? Yeah. Shepard hauled in 15 passes for 197 yards and a touchdown. Now, Sooner fans held their breath whenever he went out in this uh, late in the second quarter, but he came back in the second half and just made some really big plays yeah. for the Sooners down the stretch. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Mason, who gets it on defense? My defensive MVP is going to be Zach Sanchez. The story going into this game was how Tyler Lockett though. torched the secondary last year over 250 yards. This year was a completely different story because of Zach Sanchez. When Sanchez was covering Lockett, Lockett was targeted three times. He only had one catch for three yards against wow. Sanchez. That's pretty good. Sanchez finished the day with three tackles and two batted down passes. One of those was in the end zone, saved a touchdown for, for the Sooners. So yet another great He's game for Zach Sanchez. He's a great, great player. All Mr. Over the place. Mr. Consistent. Thanks, guys. Taylor Newcomb caught up with linebacker Gino Grissom on going forward in this week's spotlight. Um, you know, we just got to be stay strong, stay strong minded. Um, you know, uh, this game is a humbling game. And, uh, you know, if if you're not ready, it, it'll make you pay. And, uh, and not to say that we weren't ready, but K-State just had, you know, they were one point better than us last week. So, And, you know, it's safe to say that you're a major leader on this defense. What are you telling the younger guys just to keep their heads up, their heads up moving forward? Uh, you know, just that we got to bounce back. You know, we've all been here before, um, you know, uh, you can't win them all, and uh, you know and that's exactly what happened. You know we, we're down, we're down two, and we still got a long season to go. So we got to make sure that we bounce back. And looking ahead to the rest of the season, obviously you've got Iowa State coming up next weekend, and then Baylor and OSU down the road. How are you feeling about the rest of this season? Um, we're feeling good. Um, you know, I mean, uh, obviously you know we're disappointed, but you know you can't get too low. Um, you know, we know that. You know, we got uh, a lot of great teams coming in with Baylor and uh, Iowa State, and uh, it's, it's, it's not going to be an easy way to finish out the season. So, You guys do have a bye week coming up this weekend. Do you think that it came at a good time, allowing the team to regroup, in a sense? Uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it came at a good time. Um, I just think that, you know, we need to refocus and, and, you know, get back to the little things, technique, fundamentals, and, and uh, continue to try to get better as, as, as a team. And like I mentioned earlier, with the tough teams that you do do have coming up, what is the biggest challenge that the defense is going to face throughout the rest of this season? Um, you know, the Big 12 is, is uh, you know, 
full of great teams, and you know, and, and the thing about it is, you know, they they all watch film, so they're going to you know see the things that we struggled with, and, and they're going to make sure that they implement those things in their in their schemes as well. So we got to make sure that you know the little things that we did wrong in the last games, we got to make sure that you know those become a strength uh, in our defense and okay. as offense as well. All right, thanks, Gino. Well, a game looming ahead for OU football is Baylor, but when it comes to volleyball, Matt, they took care of the Bears this weekend. That's right. The volleyball team was the one center team who got it done on Saturday, taking down the Baylor Bears in front of a jam-packed McCaslin Fieldhouse. Uh, the only, the, it only took Oklahoma four sets to send the Bears home in defeat, edging out, the, edging out Baylor three sets to one. Sophomore Kimmy Gardner posted her best match of the year, recording a team-high 17 kills seven of which, Mason, came in the pivotal third set. The team improves, in, uh, improves to 14 and five on the season, heading out to Manhattan on Wednesday to take on K-State. Now I heard the, what was it, the soccer team? Soccer team. They weren't that Yeah, lucky. well it was a tough weekend for the Sooners soccer team, losing their two games against Baylor and Oklahoma State. In the first game, OSU went up early, but the Sooners answered back with a goal by Lizzie Lou Allen in the 56th minute. A late goal by OSU in the 96th minute is what did the Sooners in as they fell 2-1 to one to the Cowgirls. Against Baylor, the Sooners had to come back again after being down 1-0, and it, this time was Devin Barnett who even the score at one apiece in the 29th minute. But it only took Baylor 46 seconds to respond as they went up 2-1, to one, and that's where the score stayed. So a tough weekend all around for the Sooners soccer team. Well, Mason, I know it's only fall ball, but wow, the yeah. softball team is just, they cannot be contained. No, they're they that can't. good. Yeah, they're, uh, the, they're last time the, really team, well. the last time the team took the Diamond, they defeated Seminole State 23 to 2. Now on Friday, OU crushed 11 homers en route to a 31 to 1 annihilation of Butler Community yeah. College. The two teams did agree to play 10 innings again, and I don't know why they decided no, to do that again. I, I have no idea. Uh, the team recorded 25 total hits, and three Sooners blasted, blasted a pair of homers each. So, Woo. Woo. Yeah, they're big, good. Big day for them. Woo. Well, the women's tennis team played in the UTSA ITA Central <laughs> Regional Championships Woo. in Stillwater, Oklahoma three, this past three. weekend, and it was a good weekend for one OU player in particular. Senior Abby Melrose made it all the way to the quarterfinals of the tournament before falling to the 14th seed, Vlada Kabovic of Oklahoma State, in two sets, 6-3, 6-0. Melrose was the only player for OU to make it that far. However, the team finished with a singles record of 14-15 and 15 and a doubles record of 4-4, four and four, but a good weekend for Melrose Abby Melrose. Place. Yeah, uh, she was in my French class sophomore year, so <laughs> bonjour, Ooh, Abby. Ooh, got you got like that moves, right there? Ooh. Yeah, right there. All right, thanks All right, so much, guys. Don't go anywhere because coming up next in Face Off, we'll debate depth at quarterback. We also have Eric Stryker in studio. We'll talk with him. Yeah. Stay with us. Stryker, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. You want to help out with face-off later on? Yeah, I got you. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. First up, though, backup quarterback Cody Thomas entered the Kansas State game for an <laughs> injured Trevor Knight. Led the Sooners to their first touchdown. What happens at quarterback for OU? Matt, you're up first. Well, fans caught another glimpse of Cody Thomas on Saturday, and boy, did he look good. Yeah, he good. Thomas entered, uh, didn't quiver and led the team to a touchdown. Now, we saw him in week two versus Tulsa. Then on Saturday, he came in in a very high-pressure situation with the team driving down the field, ultimately leading in leading them to a touchdown. Now, I just think I was really impressed with uh, his calmness under the gun, you know, yeah. so young. Uh, I think that if Knight does struggle, Stoops should have no issues at all putting him under center. Well, I'm going to stop you right there because Trevor Knight is and will continue to be this team's quarterback, and I'm going to tell you why. If this question Thanks. was asked to me two weeks ago, I think I would feel a little differently, but we saw a special Trevor Knight against Kansas State on Saturday. He threw for over 200 yards. Good. Critics say... Trevor, you need to improve your accuracy. So what does he do? Goes out and throws for 81% of it, completes 81% of his passes. Trevor and I don't make enough big plays. 47-yard touchdown completion to Sterling Shepard. That's a big play to me. And a, a few third-down conversions that he had. So yep. Trevor Knight is this team's quarterback and yeah. will be. Basketball is back and practice is in full swing for the OU women's basketball team. Who will you ha have a big year for the Sooners? Well, with Aaron Ellenberg gone, Shereen Campbell has all the experience to be this team's leader. She's already been a star, and she's entering her senior year. Last year, she was second on the team in points per game with just a hair over 12 points per game. Aaron Ellenberg was second place in the entire Big 12. 
well, now that she's gone, the ball's going to be in Campbell's hands a lot more this season. You know, I think that she's primed and ready to have an even bigger year this year for Coach Cole. Well, you can take her. I'm going to take Nicole Campbell because she is about to get buckets Nicole this year. Cornette. <laughs> Nicole Cornette. You go, Nicole Cornette. We can Cornette. make them a hybrid. No, 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 That's no, 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 no. fine. Nicole Cornette. She's a sharpshooter, folks. Over, over OU's final 10 games last season, she had 9.7 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, 87% of her free throws, and 43% from behind the arc, the money ball, the three-pointer. She's a sharpshooter. I like her, and she's number one in your program, number one in your heart. All right, chill out, chill All out. Right. You got a crush All right, over there. Good one there. Yeah. Phantom. Okay, so Eric Stryker, this guy is sitting right next to me. Midseason All American, ESPN, CBS, Sports Illustrated. So, guys, here's your last question. Um, what sooner would you add as a midseason All American? Well, no, no surprise whatsoever that our boy Strike yeah. made the list, yeah. but oh, I'm wondering why Sterling oh, Shepard yeah. was left off yeah. the list. Uh, averaging 21 yards per catch, Shepard ranks third among all FBS receivers. That's right, ahead of Alabama's Amari Cooper, who most believe the is the hopeful. best in the country. Yeah. Heisman hopeful, exactly. Yeah. He already has five games of over 100 yards receiving. He's only played seven games this year. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. He has one with 215 yards. Uh, you know, this guy's just incredibly reliable. He's a star. Uh, he's He's great. I should. I don't know why he's not on there. Yeah, I mean, I'm sitting here looking at this list, and I'm wondering why Zach Sanchez isn't on there. He's been one of the best corners in the nation this year. 28 no tackles, zone. five interceptions. One of those was returned for a touchdown against Texas. The two corners that SI named as All-Americans were combined 32 tackles, three interceptions, and only one touchdown. So Sanchez is almost better than them combined. So yeah, that's why I got Sanchez. Look, he's just a stud. He's yeah. Mr. Reliable out there. He's a stud. Give me Sanchez. Ooh, look at that feet in there. Yeah. I love All it. right, it's time to pick our winner. Striker, I'm turning to you first. Do you think it's Matt or Mason? I'm going to have to go with my man, Matt. Oh, hey. 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 oh, oh my God. Sorry about one. it. Is it Matt? <laughs> oh, don't you silence them. Or is it Mason? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to give it to Mason because it's his yep. first time. Thank you. First face off. Good job, Mason. It's now time for our tweet of the week. This one coming from the <laughs> OU football Twitter account. He did it. DeMarco Murray just ran for over 100 yards for the seventh straight game to start the season. Hashtag record breaking hashtag Sooners. Incredible. Don't go anywhere because coming up next, we'll take a look at Sooner football walk ons. We'll also talk more with linebacker Eric Stryker. Stay with us. Special thanks to our Cornerstone Television partners, Chesapeake Energy, Riverwind Resort, Anheuser-Busch, OU Outreach, OU Alumni Association, OU Medicine, and the OU Presidents Associates. Go, go back. Have okay. Hard work paid off when walk-on Caleb Gastelum received a scholarship after the Tulsa game earlier this season. Taylor Newcomb reports on Sooner football walk-ons working to do the same. There's a stigma about being a walk-on. All pain, no gain. They put in all the hours on the practice field, hoping to end up here in this stadium, maybe even with a scholarship. For senior linebacker Caleb Gastelum, that's exactly what happened. Homeschooled growing up, Gastelum came to OU as a walk-on in 2011. He's played in the majority of games, mostly on special teams, but it wasn't until this season that he truly started to shine. Against the University of Tulsa, Gastelum had nine tackles, a sack, and an interception. After the game, Bob Stoops not only gave him the game ball, but a scholarship as well. He said, you know, Caleb saved his seven points there. And for that, he gets a game ball, and then he mentioned that I get a scholarship, and it just went went crazy. The locker room went crazy. All the guys were jumping on me and stuff. It was it was awesome. There have been other such success stories around the country, just to name a few. Long Six. snapper Connor no, Udelhoven from Wisconsin. <laughs> Quarterback John Townsley from Vanderbilt, and linebacker DeAndre Ward from Mississippi State. But there are still plenty of walk-ons working to strike it big. Reuben Hunter is a sophomore linebacker at OU. Although he was recruited by Kansas, Tulsa, and several D2 schools, he decided instead to come to Norman as a preferred walk-on. Hunter said he knows he made the right decision, but he has still struggled at times. Because it is it's really hard at sometimes. You definitely have to decide that you're going to give it all, all you got. It's, you know, it does make it harder on grades and stuff, but... Uh, 
I do think it's worth it for sure. Hunter said that if a walk-on tells you he's never thought about quitting, he's lying. He's had times of doubt himself, but said he's thankful that he stuck with it. I'm just thankful to be part of it, part of the part of the team. And but I think almost everyone has thought about it for a little bit because it is so hard, but it's it's worth it in the end. Last year as a freshman, Hunter played in the spring game and led the team in tackles. He was also named the scout team player of the year. But he's been fighting for a lot more than a spot in the spring game. Hunter said his goal right now is to make it on special teams. I just want a really good tackle on kickoff. I think that's a pretty good goal. You know, whenever you walk out the locker room and you're in your pads and, you know, you're going to practice, there's often little kids there that are, you know, they don't know who you are. They don't know if you're a walk-on. They don't know if you're the starting quarterback. And, you know, you, you talk to them for a little while, give them a, you know, a high five and just makes their day. And you know, I like to use that influence for good. Taylor Newcomb, Sooner Sports Pad. Thanks, Taylor. The Sooners have a bye week, then they'll face Iowa State. Until then, we've got linebacker Eric Stryker in studio. He's joined now by Matt and Mason, guys. Shrek, thanks for joining us today, man. Thanks for having me. Well, we talked about it all show long. You were named a midseason All-American. That's got to feel pretty good, huh? Yeah, you know, when you uh, respect the game and do everything you need to do in the offseason and, you know, work your tail off like and do what Coach asks you to do, good things happen. So this wasn't by mistake. I mean, I, I feel like I work hard and I respect the game. and um, So I did the things I need to do to get there. So I appreciate it. Well, with the season being only halfway over, how do you keep your team motivated to keep moving on during throughout the season? Well, we got, what, five five games left. So you just, you know, tell, you know, just keep a positive attitude, you know, come to practice and, you know, prepare the same way we have uh, been doing and, uh, you know, keep a positive attitude. Let's, you know, try to correct our mistakes. Well, you guys are heading into a bye week this week, another bye week. Uh, how are, how's the team regrouping and getting ready for Iowa State? Well, we just, you know, th this week, you know, we, we work on the things that, that we need to work on that hurt us, you know, in the, in the two games that we, uh, that we lost, whatever it is, discipline, you know, execution. So this is a good week, you know, especially after, you know, the loss to, to get together, you know, have a, meetings just as players and, mm -hmm. you know, try to correct the things that, you know, we need to do as a team to move on. Right. Well, you grew up in Tampa uh, as a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. What NFL player, current NFL player, do you model your game after? Uh, I would say, you know, Von Miller's pretty close. Um, I, you got Tyran Matthew as well. Just those guys oh, who kind of like. Honey Badger. Yeah, honey yeah badger. all yeah. out in space. Kind of, you know, the coaches allow them to be free and do what they, you know, kind of do what they want. Just blitzing and then. You know, dropping back in coverage, you don't know what you're going to yeah. get from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, great players. Uh, you know, I watch film on them all the time. So, I like to think I play like those. Yeah. All right, Shrake. Well, we're not done yet. Allison has an audience question for you. Allison? I do. This one is coming from Corey from the hockey team. What do you think of the Walk of Champions? Oh, I think that's uh, – I've been, I've been waiting for that since I got here. I think that's <laughs> cool to uh, – you know, because we usually just got off the bus – and like just, you know, just walked in. I was, that was just boring. So now we, you know, get off the bus, have the cheerleaders and the band and all the, you know, the fans there and kids there, you know, we get to, you know, show them love and express our love to them. So I think it's great that we uh, got that. Get to dress up, show off some fashion, right? Yeah. All right, don't go anywhere. Coming up next in this week's Sooner Sports Pod Challenge, we're playing Buckethead's S'mores Edition. It's going to be a fun one. Stay with us. Sooner Sports Pad. It's now time for this week's Sooner Sports Pad Challenge, and we are playing. Yeah. 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 All show long, we've also got Christopher from the hockey team helping us out. Yeah. Mason, how does this work? Well, we're going to be making s'mores, but we got to get it into our teammates' buckets. So yeah. that's how we got to make it first. So you start with the graham cracker, then you got to get the chocolate, and then you have to get. The marshmallow. And after but not, we get only, not only do we have to get it in there, we have to eat it after we're done. So the team who eats the most s'mores wins. So yeah. I right. hope so you're hungry. Here we I don't go. know how we're going to do this, to be honest Three, with you. Two, but two, one, go. All right, Chris. Yeah. Oh, oh, you got to move for me. Oh, oh, okay, shoot. Here we go. Yeah. There we go. Here we go. Yeah, Chris, I see you. Yeah. All right, eat it, eat it, eat it. Yeah, you're good, Chris. Oh, shoot. Yeah, Chris. Go. 
Yeah, go, go, eat it, Chris, go. Brothers, dad, just eat, eat it, Chris. There you go. Yeah, eat it. Get the, chocolate. Get the chocolate. Get the chocolate. Get the chocolate. Get the chocolate. I guess you could do it that way. <laughs> All right, you ready, Chris? You ready? Okay, we're all tied up. Don't switch it up. Okay, start with the graham crackers. Start with the graham crackers. There you go. Come on. We got him. We got him. Oh. Oh. oh man, I'm hungry. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, go marshmallow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Marshmallow, go. Okay, here we go. Oh, not good. Come on, we got this. I'm really bad. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm bad. Oh, gosh. Come on, Chris, you got it. I'm going. He's going for the time. Yeah. Come on, come on. All right, ready? Go. Oh, shoot. Oh, ball. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. Oh, ball. <laughs> oh. Striker is making his. Oh. All right, strike. Oh. There you go. Eat it like Bane. Eat it like Bane. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Alright, let's go. Get four. Let's get four. Mm. I got half one in again. Hold on. That's in there. That's in there. Oh, it didn't go in. Alright, here we go. There we go. There we go. Alright, it looks like oh, I Matt messed it up. Stryker are going home as our Buckethead Sports Edition winners. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to catch us next week. We'll see you then.